Welcome to the next rhythm challenge. So today we have another one here, another rhythm. And again, we have our rhythm strips in front of us right here from our standard 12 lead ECG. An enlarged version of that down here help you see those small boxes. Again, we have leads two and V1, okay? Um, again, enlarged here, two and V1. Remember, lead two is an inferior limb lead uh, positioned at positive 60 degrees in the frontal plane where V1 is our short axis view of the heart, giving us a great view of both atria. So when we look into for atrial abnormalities, lead two and V1 are often the best leads to look at, okay? So let's look at here. So again, it says, name the following rhythm and choose the best answer. Choice A is atrial fibrillation, B, ventricular fibrillation, C, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, or torsades, you may have heard of, okay? And D is monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so pause the video, take a chance to go through them your, uh, yourself, choose an answer, and then we'll go through this together. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to think through it. All right, so let's, uh, let's go through these one at a time. So notice first off that we have in our answer choices one atrial rhythm and then four ventricular, or three ventricular rhythms, okay? So let's go through the A, because uh, A is actually incorrect here. Atrial fibrillation is not present here, and why is that? Well, we see no P waves, which is something you'll see in uh, atrial fibrillation, okay? What else do you see in atrial fibrillation? Well, remember, it's the most common irregularly, irregular rhythm, okay? Meaning that none of the intervals are consistent throughout. Now. If you were to measure some of these out, you may actually find that they are pretty close. Okay, so if you look down at lead two, all right, from one peak here to the next peak, okay, if you were to measure these out here, you may actually see that they are pretty close together, okay? Now, that's not the only reason. The morphology of these are not consistent with beats that are just getting through to the ventricles. Remember, with atrial fibrillation, you have the atria that are fibrillating, but then you have some conduction down to the ventricles and you have those normal underlying QRS complexes. Here, you just have these complexes that are almost looking like they're, quote, twisting. So notice how they're getting larger, okay? I won't go over too many of them, but notice how it's getting larger, okay? Up here, and then coming back down, okay? And then eventually down here, you kind of see the same thing, okay? And then it comes back down if you had more of the strip. So that's something to know. So again, here, and this is something that should uh, be something you should be thinking about. We'll get to that in a bit. So atrial fibrillation is not correct here, okay? So hopefully that was clear for everyone that, that this is not atrial fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation, okay? Now that's a tricky one because if you look here, kind of looks like these are all fibr fibrillatory waves, okay? Now, if you look below, you may see more consistency, but some of these look like they may are almost um, imitating ventricular fibrillation. Maybe parts of it are, okay? So this, the, when we look at the whole rhythm, and again, we're choosing the best answer, ventricular fibrillation is not correct here, okay? So remember, with ventricular fibrillation, you just have fibrillatory ventricular waves, but no uh, clear QRS complexes that are being formed, okay? Now, uh, so VFib is not correct here either. So not AFib or VFib. Now, of the two choices, C or D, okay, monomorphic or polymorphic. So what is the difference here? Monomorphic, as the name implies, so notice that as poly or mono. Mono means of one morphology, okay? So both of these are fast rhythms, so fast, meaning they're over 100 beats per minute, okay? They're also regular rhythms, okay? They're ventricular tachycardia, so fast, and they have wide QRS complexes, okay? So pretty much makes what we think of a ventricular tachycardia. What's differentiating these two is the morphology. Monomorphic has mono equals one morphology, okay? Whereas the poly has greater than one morphology. Now, if you take a look at this, do all the QRS complexes, these ventricular complexes that we see, look the same in morphology? Well, 
Clearly, they aren't, okay? So that should make sense that monomorphic VTAC is not the answer here, okay? You don't have consistently the same... Uh, imagine if you have a rhythm strip with just these two complexes going throughout, okay? But the same morphology throughout, then we would call that maybe monomorphic VTAC, okay? And here you have different morphologies. Some are smaller, some are larger, and it's kind of going back and forth. So monomorphic is not correct. In fact, the answer is polymorphic VTAC, and this is what we call torsades de points, okay, or twisting of the points. You pretty much have these complexes twisting around um, these, the plane, okay. You have changes, consistently changes in the QRS axis where they're going up and down and all over the place. Um, and that's because it's polymorphic. They're originating from various areas. So this is what we call polymorphic VTAC. Okay, and this is something that can pre be precipitated by what we call an R on T phenomenon. Remember, we're looking at that QT interval in patients. So if you imagine here's our complex, here's a P wave, here's our QRS or RS complex. Okay, here's an R wave and an S wave. This is, again, the T wave. Now our QT intervals from the beginning of our QRS complex all the way to the end here, this is our QT interval, okay? Now, if this starts to get prolonged, and oftentimes clinically, we start thinking of it when it gets over 500, okay? Now, generally, prolongation in males is over 440 milliseconds, okay, in females, 460 milliseconds, but clinically, often we get worried when it gets around 500 or more, we start, you know, hesitating on what antiemetics we use, what antibiotics we use, what antipsychotics you use, because... What this can do, or those medications, is prolong this even more, okay? And when you prolong that even more, you have more cells that are able and ready, of the ventricular cells, able to uh, take on a new impulse. So if you have a new QRS complex that falls somewhere on here, okay, it may precipitate out one of these polymorphic ventricular tachycardias. Okay, so that's something that you can think about. Okay, prolonged QT may pre precipitate out um, this polymorphic VT. Okay, and that can sometimes then go out and become um, ventricular fibrillation. So maybe we are seeing some fibrillatory waves. Now, actually, this continued on, and notice some people call this this bow tie appearance. Okay, of the twisting of the points or torsades. So that's also called torsades. Okay. So just uh, to recap here, atrial fibrillation, not correct, right? We have no P waves, but you can obviously see that these are, you have no conduction down through the ventricles, okay? This is a form of VTAC and not ventricular fibrillation, although maybe some areas of it look like VFib, okay? But if you look and choose the best answer, it's a VTAC. It's not monomorphic because it has more than one morphology. So our best choice here is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia or torsades de points. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.